should recommend that if people all join the March 10th uh, for the Tibetan, that would be great. So, uh, we'll see. Um, thank you so much uh, for the uh, invitation today. Let's see. and the invitation my husband and I, Hiro, um, we're so happy that we can be here today to share with you uh, the celebration. Uh, my name is Lily, and my husband is Hiro. And even with that nice introduction that CY has made, you probably is wondering right now, I mean, who the heck we are? <laughs> Why TA Boston should invite us? So the first part of my talk will be talking about our family, uh, Tupelo's family. Uh, as you can see from uh, the title of my slide. Now, who is Totolo? Totolo is actually the 19 years old cat that we have. Okay? And her name came from a Japanese uh, animation character. This is the original uh, Totolo. And it's this big, fat thing. It's got great furs and it eats and sleeps all day long. That's all he does. And that's the same for our cat, Totolo, hence the name. Now, as a matter of fact, the Totolo here today is not our cat, it's me, the two-legged one, okay? I borrow her name and uh, I use it for my blood. So the name of the blood is called Totolo Rules, or like uh, what CJ has shown you earlier, Totolo uh, Dangjia. Now, which contains my views and comments about the politics in Taiwan. I will talk about that blog a bit more uh, in the different talk later this afternoon. So now the Mr. of Tupelo is off, uh, let's go back and take a look at our family, uh, which is actually a zoo. Uh, right now we have six members in the family, but other than Hiro and me, the rest of them are furry animals. Okay, um, the thing is that uh, it's a zoo, right? So there should be a director, and that's me. Now, I was born in Tainan, Taiwan, okay? and Hiro is the deputy director for the zoo, and he was born in Taipei. Now, um, he was born to a Japanese mother and Taiwanese father. So I must be born this way. I always love crazy about animals, ever since I was at a very young age. Um, since kindergarten, I would bring home strange um, you know, animals from the street, and my mom would just keep throwing them out. So it came to a point that I was so mad. So one day I told my mom, one day when I have my own house, I'm going to fill it up with all kinds of animals, and no one, no one can say anything about it. So you can say that my childhood dream has come true. So it seems reasonable for me to attend a veterinary school. Uh, I went to college in Taichung, and after graduation and worked for a while, I came to the States to go to graduate school study here, and I went to Cornell in Ithaca, New York. As for Hiro, he was born in Taipei, and then um, he, he did grow up in Taiwan, but um, when he was in Taipei, he still attended Japanese school. And when he was about 10 years old, he was packed up and sent to Japan by his parents. <laughs> after high school, he went to Waseda University. And then after that, according to Hiro, the most important thing, the most important event took place in his life is he came to Cornell. <laughs> <laughs> to meet me. So, well, we got married. Uh, after a year, we got married and he left to Cincinnati. So then uh, one of our American friends said to us, oh, so you, are, you guys are MBA. And I said, oh, no, no, no. My major was in virology. Hero was in engineering. We're not major in business. No MBA. The guy said, oh, no, I mean, MBA is married but available. <laughs> so after a year and a half separation, Oh, so Hiro went to Cincinnati, I forgot to bring that up. So after a year and a half separation, Hiro went to Wisconsin. Um, 
and then I followed suit. So we both finished our PhD uh, at the University of Wisconsin at Madison, and that was 20 years ago when we arrived in Madison. Stop counting. I know what you're doing. <laughs> anyway, remember my childhood dream, all right? So as soon as we get to Madison, first thing first, we got a dog. This is Nico the second. Right? Before I uh, left Taiwan, I had a dog. Uh, his name was Nico, so he was Nico Senior. Now this is Nico the second. Okay. Then um, the next year, we felt that uh, you no know, Nico was too lonely when we both go to school, so we adopted a cat. And here comes Tutelo. Okay. I mean, Toto and Nico, they were truly best buddies. They would even share a couch together. However, it's still kind of hard for them to play together because Nico was 80 pounds and Toto was only 10. So, of course, we had to adopt, you know, another dog. And his name was Tomo. Tomo stands for a friend in Japanese. Okay? And indeed, Tomo was best friend to Nico. And then two years later, someone dropped off Inu at our place. Okay? Now, Inu was not a vendor, but his owners couldn't keep him. So, and we didn't have the heart to see him being sent to the shelter, so he came and joined our families. Now, Inu means um, a dog in Japanese, okay? Um, he was named by his previous owner as Inu. We had nothing to do with it. And let me tell you one thing. Don't name your dog dog. They're bound to act like one. So Inu was indeed a challenge at the beginning when he first came. So, okay, now the story continues. Remember, this is a zoo, right? Okay. One day, a stray cockatiel flew to our house in a thunderstorm. She was probably taking, uh, seeking the shelter from the storm. But when we heard the screaming, and then we opened the door, she was hanging upside down on our screen door. So we opened the door, she flew in and landed on the shoulder. That's it. So we called the uh, animal control center, we called the shelter. No one reported a missing cockatiel. So what did we do? She stayed, and we named her Stormy. Now, after, after uh, Nico the second passed away, we found another golden retriever. Uh, here, let me use that. That's Nico the third. Okay. And then after Tomo Senior passed away, we got another border collie mix. That's Tomo the second. You notice, right? We name our pets the same name all the time. We kind of like to do that because this way we we'll keep calling their name and we talk about them all the time. It's just like, you know, I feel like they have never loved us for heaven. Well, in my opinion, all animals go to heaven. It's the people that I'm not so sure about. <laughs> now, I have told you what Totolo's family is about. Now, before I move on uh, to the second part to talk to, uh, tell you about Totolo's little friend in Wisconsin and what they have been doing the past decades to promote Taiwan. I want to take this opportunity to uh, do a little promotion for having pets. You know, I think everyone should have pets in their family because why? They're good for your health, both uh, for your body and soul. Now, pets are natural mood enhancer. They just make you happy, regardless what kind of days you have at work, uh, doesn't matter how lousy you feel, when you come back from work, they're always, always, always happy to see you, okay? And then, um, being with pets will lower your blood pressure, okay? And it's good for your heart. As a matter of fact, epidemiology studies have found out that a uh, pet owner having pets will reduce your chance of having heart attack. And even if, unfortunately, you get one, you will have a better chance to recover. Uh, and why is that? There is scientific evidence to support that. Because, first of all, having pets will decrease the level of cortisol in your body. So it will make you less stressed and less nervous. 
and they help increase the serotonin, so that will improve your memory and uh, slow down your aging. Um, and they will also help uh, make you happy because it, they will produce dopamine in your body. Just like when you're eating chocolate, dopamine just goes up, right? But eating too much chocolate will make you fat, not pets. Okay. And then, if you just spend five minutes, five minutes petting your uh, dogs and cats, both of you will benefit and have increased the level of oxytocin. Oxytocin is also called the medicine of love and hugging. You know, when a, a mother uh, feeding their infant, their oxytocin will increase. That helps the bonding between the two. And so oxytocin slow down your heartbeat, um, you know, reduce the pressure, reduce your low, uh, your blood pressure. So all this is actually an excellent uh, antidepressant natural medicine. Having pets is also good for your kids. Um, the study have found out that kids who have uh, pets in their household actually have less chance to have allergies or asthma, uh, and even have stronger immunity. Also for kids who have uh, ADHD, you know, some of those attention problems, uh, having pets can help them to learn the responsibility of taking uh, their animals and also release too much uh, energy that these kids usually have. Furthermore, having pets will make you stay in touch with other people. You will always find some uh, pet owner talking to each other on the street, and they could be complete strangers to each other. As a matter of fact, before Inu passed away last April, a lot of times you know, our neighbor would just kind of wave at us when we were walking all three dogs in the neighborhood. But uh, after that, some of them would even walk across the street just to talk to us and ask where is Inu, and, um, and they would tell us how sorry they were when they learned the news. As a matter of fact, studies have also found that having pets will um, kind of reduce the delay the progression of the Alzheimer's disease because they will exercise more and stay in touch. These days, there are also many dogs that are trained to help their diabetic or athletic owners uh, before a dangerous episode takes place. And of course, since dogs have powerful noses, they can even detect cancer in humans in the early stages. So where can you find the pets? Um, other than your local shelter, you can go to this website called petfinder.com. It's very user-friendly, and you can search for many types of uh, breeds of uh, animals. It uh, depends on their ages and uh, you know the distance, distance from where you live. And when you go on to vacation, you don't have to, you know, leave them behind. You can go to this website because a lot of um, hotels and establishments nowadays actually welcome uh, their uh, pets with owner. So, uh, if just in case you really cannot afford to have pets, such as <laughs> such as dog, cats, or other kind of pets in the house, if you could do that, have a query. And if you're watching those fish swimming slowly in the tank, that's still good for your uh, benefits, benefit to your uh, health. So I hope I have convinced you that okay, uh, wonderful thing, what a wonderful thing it is to have pets in your own family. And now I'm going to switch gear to my second part of the talk to talk about total loss of little friends in Wisconsin. So. I guess I need to open up the other talk and let me see. Oh, no, not that one. Just bear with me a couple minutes. Oh, too, too low. You're here. Okay. Now this is this is the second part of my talk. And before I start on that part. I am going to, oh, excuse me, uh, got to start right like that. Do you think I will be able to play this uh, using any type of media she player? Will be Canadian champion oh. if she makes this shot. <laughs> oh, okay, that's not, okay. you're not going to, you're not supposed to see that now, not yet. <laughs> okay, this is the second part. 
Okay, in this part, I want to share with you what a group of uh, Taiwanese students have been doing in Madison, Wisconsin for the past decades uh, to promote Taiwan or Taiwanese culture in our community. The first organization is the Taiwan Public Group. Okay, it started 15 years ago and it's still going strong, uh, even today. For the second group, that is the Taiwanese Curling Club, founded in the year 2000. And I want to start uh, my talk with this group. It's kind of unusual, I know. Now, first of all, has anyone here played curling before? No? Oh, you break my heart. All right, have you seen the curling before? Oh, yes. Thank you, thank you. That's wonderful to see. Okay. Now, uh, just in case some of you are not familiar with this sport, let me just make a quick introduction. Okay. First of all, it's an ancient sport invented by the Scottish people. And it was used to play outdoor as a winter outdoor sport. Of course, curling nowadays is playing a very different type of uh, arena now. It was first introduced to Winter Olympic in 1998. And that was when Hiro and I first saw the sports ever on the television, of course. Now, there's four persons on the team here to ski. It's calling the shots and uh, making decisions about the strategy. Okay? And then, but everyone in the team would take turns to throw rock or sweeping, okay? Why sweep the ice? Yeah, I know a lot of them will actually make fun about us, about this sweeping on the ice. But it will actually help to remove any dirt or possible, you know, uh, object on the ice that might interfere the traveling of the rock. And also the friction of the sweeping will generate heat. So it will actually melt the surface of the ice and it will make the rock travel a bit faster, straighter, or um, longer. Okay. Now the goal of this game is to place your stone uh, closer to the center of the house than your opponent team. Now this is called the house. Okay, that's the target. Um, both teams will take turns to throw a rock, and each person has two shots to make in each end. Finally, at the end of each end, you will come to the uh, rocks to decide on the uh, scoring, and there were usually eight or ten ends in one game. And if I have to describe curling in just one phrase only, I believe chess on um, ice is probably the best way to describe it, because it involves lots of strategy. And now I just want to show you a short clip of famous shot that made by Jennifer Stone, who is a world champion from Canada. Now this is the situation, okay? Um, the game was Canadian Championship game in 2005. Miss Jones was about to deliver her last shot. Her team played Red Rocks. Okay, so they were actually, this is Red, so that's four, that's six. So there were two points behind, and Miss John has to deliver her very last shot. Okay, since this is the last end, if she scores two, they tie the game, they play extra end. Or if she can score more than two and win the game. In the house right now, that's the house. There are one, two, three, three red rocks, and there's one yellow. Okay. Because we only count the same color of the stone that's closest to the center. So if this is the end result, the yellow team score one and red one gets nothing. So for the red team uh, to score, they will have to take away that yellow rock, right? Unfortunately, see these? These rocks were guarding the house. So it's not like they can just come in and pick it up. All right, so what do they do? The red team will have to use this rock outside of the house to their advantage. So now let's just look at the shots. All right. So this is the... Okay, now let's look at the shot. That's only 30 seconds. Most 
difficult attempt. Yeah. Trying to come in off the stone on the outside. Trying to yeah. 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 <laughs> Look at that. Oh. Where's the contact? Oh. Oh. So now you got it, right? How exciting was that? I mean, Hiro and I watched the game uh, in uh, the Olympic in 1998, and after that, we saw that looks interesting. I like it makes it look easy. Well, anyway, so we decided we want to know about the sports a bit more. So we ordered a tape called Curly ABC, and then there are a lot of shots in that video clip. It's just wonderful, marvelous. So then we decided, oh, okay, I think we want to try curling. And somehow, Hiro was able to convince a group of Taiwanese to join Medicine Curling Club with us. Um, I think it was his cooking, I'm sure. So we joined the Medicine Curling Club in October 2000, and there were 10 of us. Okay. After a while, the Medicine Curling Club people actually told us that they called that nine as the Taiwanese invasion. So, that was really cool. So the ten of us who started this game, us uh, we started this curling club using the Madison curling club called the Taiwanese curling club. And Hero came up with this logo and the name called the Fighting Yips. Okay. And as you know, the shape of Taiwan, the island, just like the shape of a yam or sweet potato. And also, yam is so popular in Taiwan. So sometimes we even call ourselves children of yam. Okay. So he also made this little year here, that's Taiwan, wearing a little uh, Scottish kilt to honor the origin of this sport. And of course, people will wonder about it, you know, it's interesting about the logo and the name of Fighting Yen. So we get a chance to tell them more about Taiwan. Well, like anyone who didn't know better or didn't know the reality, as soon as we started calling, we said, oh, why don't we represent Taiwan to attend some international competition? Well, so we, contact the, we contacted the ICE Association in Taipei and volunteered our service. Now, this is what you do, okay, if you want to become the star athlete in your country. You find a sport that no one else play, then you immediately become the national team. So that's what we did. Alright, so from then on, we went to the Pacific Curling Championship. This is a Pacific Curling Championship uh, five times over the years. And then the Asian Winter Olympic uh, once. And we even went to the US National Championship once. Okay, uh, because our members were students from Taiwan. Um, I mean, uh, once they graduated, they moved away. So we started losing uh, our uh, teammate, and that's one of the reasons why we kind of stopped uh, forming team to participate in the Pacific College Championship. Um, and the other reason is that um, financial burden. Yeah, because over the years, other than the Asian Winter Game in Japan, all the expenses uh, we had to you know, uh, come up with that the membership fee at the Madison Curling Club, the training, um, and the travel expenses to all these different countries. Uh, so we almost kind of went broke because of that. <laughs> but that's okay. I mean, even now, we don't participate in the uh, Pacific Curling Championship, but there's still quite a few Taiwanese fellows still continue to play at NCC. And the names of fighting games in Taiwan have also uh, become quite well known among the curling community. Now, when we attended the AWG in Japan in 2003, the photo of our team appeared on the front page of Yomiuri newspaper after the opening ceremony. Now, Yomiuri has the largest circulation in Japan, and it didn't call us the Chinese Taipei, the most ridiculous name in the Olympic Committee. Throughout the event, they call us Team Taiwan, so it makes me very happy indeed. Yes, thank you. In addition, I guess our, our story was kind of interesting. So other news media also uh, make a special interview about us. And this was a Saki newspaper, Zhangru um, Xinhua, uh, on February 8, 2003. And this was 
actually, the Team Japan, they won that year, you know, the AWG game. Uh, and here is friend in Japan actually, you know, joke about it, said, hey, you guys made the best investment. You guys lost all the team, but your interview is bigger than their story. So, well, remember, at that time, we only started curling for two years. So most of the time when we get our eyes, we get slaughtered. But that's okay. As I had mentioned before, curling involves lots of strategy. So it's a thinking person's game. And as the years go by, we started to win a few, even though we were just amateur. In fact, when we attended uh, PCC in 2005 in Taiwan, we managed to defeat the team from Australia. And we even won the game against China. This Chinese woman team, they actually win the whole uh, you know, uh, championship. Uh, they didn't lose any game to other team, and they won the championship at the end. But we defeated them in that one game we played them fair and square. So that was a memorable experience, and because, especially because we only have curl five years. But that's the beauty of curling. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, when you start. You can still master the game because it's a finesse sport. Uh, it requires more or more of this than brutal force. So you, you need the brain, the concentration to play the game. So you probably won't be surprised to find out that uh, in the Boston area, other than the Broomstone Curling Club and the Canadian Club of Boston, there are also two university curling club. One is in MIT, and the other one is at Boston University. So uh, with that, I hope I can convince you that curling is a great sport, and then if you have ever have a chance, you should try it. And I have always wished that the Taiwanese American community can you know, take interest in this sport, especially for the second generation. Remember, you just need four person in a team. And then you may easily have the chance to represent Taiwan in the Winter Olympics, in future, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, and now uh, allow me to switch gear again. I'm going to talk about a different uh, group of people uh, at the University of Wisconsin. Um, and this is the Taiwan Public Truth. Our group started in 1997, and uh, it was started kind of by the late Dr. Alan Chen. From Chicago, he lent us his uh, one show called Rain on Tiger and also his puppets for us to perform. Now, Dr. Chen was also uh, the inventor of this type of uh, performing format. It's called Kala OK Body Show. Uh, what it does is to pre recording the whole show on the CD. So when we play uh, the show, when we perform, the puppeteer just have to maneuver the uh, puppets accordingly. Now, during the first couple of years, we probably just performed once a year, and the show at that time was in Taiwanese, with just a little bit of uh, English in the uh, background. And then in the year 2000, um, And then in the year of 2000, the International Student Organization, uh, International Student Office of Udara Madison uh, invited our group to join the outreach program. The idea is to um, have all these diverse international students group on campus to go out to the local community and bring their own cultures from all over the world. So we accepted the invitation and we formed the uh, formal Taiwan Public Truth was roughly 20 students, and I was the first president of that group at that time. And in addition, we decided that uh, the show needs to be done in English completely, so the school kids can understand them easily. And since then, over the years, we have, uh, have produced several different shows. Other than the Grand on Tiger, Hobo Bowl, we also have Millionaire Show, Do Bai Wan, and Dr. McKay of Formosa. Now, Dr. George Leslie McKay is from Canada. So this is a true story. He came to Taiwan in the late 19th century. And then he stayed. He loved this country so much. Uh, he decided he wanted to become Taiwanese, and he married a native Taiwanese woman. Um, and Hiro was born in McKay <laughs> Hospital. So, 
And also, we have The Legend of Someone Late. That's the newest production that we just finished this year. All the script, recording, music, and editing was done by our two members. Okay. So, in addition to the puppet show, whenever we perform, we always do a slide presentation about Taiwan. Um, and Taiwan is puppet tree. The slideshow will cover some basic information, like you know where this Taiwan and uh, the peoples in Taiwan. And of course, I always point out that the shape of Taiwan is just like a yen. So when everybody goes back uh, and visit a, a supermarket, they will have to go to uh, the yen, pick it up, and say it's like yes. I want to make my audience say that really loud. So. Um, uh, of course, uh, I have to tell them about the capital, Taiwan, it's Taipei. And then we also try to show the audience why the Portuguese were actually shouted Ila Formosa when they first came to Taiwan in the late 16th century because it's indeed a very beautiful place. Okay. This is the next one slide because we try to draw comparisons and connections between the United States and Taiwan. Okay. Or tell them both countries are democratic, multicultural society, and United States have Native American, we have Native tribes too. And, oh, excuse me. Wow, anyway. In fact, the Native Taiwanese are related to the Native Hawaiian in the US because they both came from the region of South Pacific Ocean. For some slides tell me to speak faster. But anyway, of course, how can we miss the night markets in Taiwan, right? The best outdoor food court in Taiwan. I think it's the previous uh, slide, yes. And I always point out that Oazen, the oyster omelette, is the best thing they ever should try when they go to Taiwan to visit. Now, the 10 minute show will finish by introduction about the Taiwanese puppetry. And we focus on the Club Puppetry Theater. Um, while these puppets can be made very easily by the school kids, like here, they can be made by the professional very beautifully. As a matter of fact, the sets of puppets that we're using right now are donated to us by Dr. Leon Chan, Zeliang Fu Jiao, from Chicago. And they were all, oh, they were all handmade uh, by the puppet master in Taiwan. So the Taiwanese public theater can be extremely innovative. You can see this kind of outdoor uh, theater perform in front of the temple during folk festival. But there is even more real type, you know, like this one. The, the uh, stage is actually sitting on top of a pickup truck, right? I mean, don't you think this is the coolest idea you've ever seen? And just to show you how popular it is in Taiwan, there's even uh, a TV channel just dedicated to Taiwanese puppet show. So, over the years, our puppet troupe has gone to many elementary school, middle school uh, in our local community. We've been to Girl Scout event, international festival, retirement centers, hospital, and even a lot of out of town uh, performances, such as. Minnesota, Iowa, Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, Washington DC, Kansas, uh, Texas, and even Los Angeles in California. I mean, <clears throat> our group has always opened its door to anyone who is willing to participate in our goals, which are to promote Taiwan diplomacy as well as Taiwanese culture. So uh, because of the format of our show is all in English, there were several international students who uh, have become part of our family. They're American students, uh, an Indian student, a Malaysian student, and even a Chinese student right now. Now, uh, the Indian student was really interesting. She became our vice president for two years. <laughs> so anyway, um, we are truly a United Nations group. Now, we're also very happy to share our material with any other group uh, in the United States. Um, the uh, puppet show, the slide presentation, stage design. It just needs four person to form a troupe. So if anyone who is interested, we would love to help out, uh, to help you with that uh, formation of the troupe. And I think this is clearly one of the easiest and finest way to promote yeah. everyone because it's subtle, it's soft, 
but it's great fun to do it, uh, not just for the audience, but uh, also um, uh, for the people who present them. So in conclusion, what I'm trying to say that is that there are all kinds of ways to promote Taiwan. Uh, just like a lot of things that I heard earlier uh, during the introduction, you know, judging, uh, and then a lot of people here are doing a wonderful job. And um, of course, promoting Taiwan doesn't have to be curling or uh, you know, playing a public show. But because of the nature of our activity, we are able to attract the young uh, generation from Taiwan to join us. And indeed, I think promoting Taiwan can be fun and cool. And so that's the message I'd like to share with you all. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, isn't it nice to have a photo here? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And uh, it's nice to know that she and uh, her husband has contributed so much for Taiwan. It's really nice. I met her about six years in the Taiwanese uh, American uh, conference, East Coast, uh, when the, uh, uh, NAPA, the North American uh, Taiwanese Association, invited her as a young scholar speaker there. I met her and uh, I've been trying to get her to here to speak to us. And because every year she had to go back to visit uh, her mom during New Year, during Lunar New Year, but because of last year, her mom just went, came here and visited them and went back at the end of last year, near the end of last year. So this year we, we are very lucky to have her and her husband here. Uh, we thank them again. And also I want to mention that uh, we, have a, we also have a total, we also have a lot of uh, puppy show uh, specialists here. Uh, we know Frank Lin, Chun Yong. You know, you know the uh, the uh, Makai story. Yes. She made a complete CD. Oh. This is our. She we used to have a hunting, hunting young, young garden Taiwanese young garden for the Yi Tuan here, and Chun Yong and uh, uh, Sang Nam. Oh, they are they are special and. Uh, also, like in recent year, we even have some new puppy master, like Howard. <laughs> <laughs> when we went to uh, uh, the uh, Cambry River Festival, the the tiger, the uh, hokobo, the grand tiger is the is the most difficult one to break. Howard just pick up in a few weeks and play very well. <laughs> And the other one is uh, Gao Jing. Gao Jing, uh, everybody knows him. He's a uh, very helpful uh, person here. He's another genius. I saw him just pray a couple of times, and uh, he's, he also is like uh, uh, pray the Hokobo very well. And the uh, one time uh, he's our major staker. Also the. Uh, uh, Liu Zhilong is very good too, and uh, the ready the puppy, and uh, so. Uh, now, uh, Didi is very good in control of her time, and I think uh, in 10 minutes we can start our talent show. But right now, question, anyone, especially young, better than father? <laughs> <laughs> young friends, no questions? Yeah, you're supposed to answer the question, but uh, since like... Uh, Do you got any questions? Some phones are very good. That's all I lived for when I was younger. Okay, if our young friend, our kids doesn't have any question about pet or anything. Oh, by the way, sorry uh, parents, uh, if your kids went back home ask for pets, <laughs> just tell them they have to take care of them if, uh, if, uh, if they won't want, okay? <laughs> and uh, so... In, in that case, uh, uh, I, I, I think we can, uh, if, if you guys are, you know, our senior, senior and young, young, young kids, if you have any question, uh, we can, uh, in the second section, we can, uh, after the, the, uh, the speech, the second section, it could catch you in time, huh? I, then, then, don't know, she can't do it.
，四月了落来啊，甲希望七八点啊，才会落吼。所以诶，人老来听到都落讲第二部分哦，搁较精彩，就是伊政治部落评论的部分吼。啊，安尼好，安尼咱即摆就甲即个诶。